All right, it is six o'clock and I will call the 14th regular common council meeting to order. Will the clerk please state the quote of the day? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Don't let what you can't do stop you from doing what you can do. Will the clerk call the roll? Alderperson Ackley? Here. Alderperson Decker? Here. Alderperson Feldy? Here. Alderperson Palicki Paneski? Here. Alderperson Laster? Here. Alderperson Mitchell? Here. Alderperson Perella? Here. Alderperson Salazar? Here. Alderperson Sabaglio? Excused. There are eight present. Thank you. For those in attendance, would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, next is approval of the minutes from our last council meeting. Uh, Alder person Flicky Paneski. I move that we approve the minutes from the council meeting held on October 4th. Second. I'll second. There's been a motion in multiple seconds. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes, please state aye. Aye. Anyone, aye. Oppo anyone opposed? Minutes are approved. All right, next uh, 1.4 is an election. An election to held this evening to fill the unexpired term for the older person in District 10. I will uh, have City Attorney Adams just to state, um, just kind of give an explanation. Sure, so we're going to be using what's called instant runoff voting, which is a uh, method of ranking uh, voters and then or ranking your choices as voters and then making a decision based on that. It's tr uh, similar to a traditional runoff election, uh, but better uh, because if uh, no candidate receives the majority of the vote, you don't have to re-vote. We'll just simply uh, continue on uh, by moving those with the fewest votes uh, and, and transferring the votes of those people until we get a majority. This way we guarantee that whoever wins the election does have a majority of support uh, from among the, the voters, in this case, uh, the alder person. You should be able to uh, vote using your email system and uh, you'll just need to make sure that when you uh, get in there, you'll see the names of the five candidates. You'll just need to move them around into the correct order before you send in your uh, vote. If you have any issues during the voting, just uh, Meredith or I are available to help. Thank you. All right, now I call for a motion to open up nominations. Alder flicky -Pineski. I move that all candidates who provided applications to the city clerk are hereby nominated and that any additional nominations be received from the floor with voting to be done by open ballot via the instant runoff method where each voter will rank the candidates in order of preference. If no candidate receives the majority of first choice votes, the candidate with the fewest votes will be eliminated and those votes transferred to their second choice. Ties will be broken by looking back to who received the most votes in the previous rounds. This process is repeated until a candidate has a majority. A candidate cannot be elected unless he or she is ranked on a majority of the ballots. Second. Been a motion and second. Any additional nominations are received by the mayor with a motion second. I call. Oh, excuse are there me. Any more nominations? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations received from the floor? Seeing none, we'll proceed then with uh, the the candidates that have applied. We'll be going in alphabetical order by last name. First up is Joe Heideman. And you can come up to the podium and just state your name. And then we just kind of ask folks to stay within four or five minutes. Thank you. Should have changed my name. Sorry. My name is Joseph Heideman. I was born in Sheboygan, and I'm a veteran, and I love living in this city. I've held the position of alderman in Sheboygan. It was my privilege to have served on every committee while on the council. I chaired public works and vice chaired other committees. I was the vice president of the council. I was committee of the whole chairman. My fellow aldermen saw that I could handle those responsibilities. During my time in office, we built a new police station, provided ambulance service, created a position of city administrator, and we corrected budget shortfalls 
an employee benefit program and adopted ordinances to help make our community safer. I always worked alongside everyone to accomplish what was best for the city of Sheboygan. I still know many of the department heads and with my previous, previous experience, I would like to complete this term and help my constituents. Please vote for me to finish this term. God has been good to me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next is Susie Holshue. Hello. Thank you to all the council members and Mayor Sorensen for this opportunity to address you. My name is Susan Holshu. I reside at 5016 Menning Road in Sheboygan. I stand before you today to make ap uh, application for a now vacant aldermatic seat to which Jim Bourne had filled. I'm a real estate broker and specialize in property management for the last 35 years and I own my own business. So I truly understand the needs of people and strive to give them the best possible living surroundings. I'm proud of Amanda Lane Apartments and the environment that has been created there. I have previously served as Alderwoman for then District Number 5 for six years. During these years, I served with Jim on council <coughs> as then our districts were right next to each other. We worked together to make Sheboygan a great place to live. I do not want to give the impression that we always agreed, because we didn't, but we always agreed to disagree on some matters and remain cordial during working um, with the council. I have served on public safety and protection, law and licensing, board of marina, parks and forestry, and the board of licensing examiners, and the board of review as alderman, and redevelopment authority and housing authority probably prior to becoming an alderman. When the aldermatic count changed from 16 to 10 and the districts were changed, I decided not to run against Jim in the election as he served this city well and we felt our district was well represented. I believe that the most important job as an alderman is to listen and work with our constituents in the city of Sheboygan, not only just those in our district, but of the entire city and all that contact us, returning phone calls, meeting, listening, discussing issues, then doing the research, speaking to the departments, if necessary to go to the meetings, and finally represent our constituents on the council floor. Always, always representing the citizens of Sheboygan. An aldermatic position is a nonpartisan position. I enjoy and work hard to represent the people. It is truly their voice that is and should be heard proudly and served to. I promise to continue the work and continue the work ethic I have moving forward as wor working as an alderman for District 10. So I stand before you today and I ask you to look favorably upon my request to fill the remaining position of alderman for District 10. I promise to, serve, promise to you that my service will be to the citizens of this city as well as to continue making Sheboygan the shining star that it is. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Robert Puckett. Good evening, Mayor and members of the council. Thank you for your time, as I know you have important matters to attend to, so I'll keep this brief. My name is Robert Puckett II, and I am applying for the vacant position of Alderman for District 10 because I believe in serving my community in order to improve and make it a better place. I'm no stranger to serving my community. In fact, for the last 20 years, I have served this great nation on active duty as a United States Marine. With my service, I have confidence that it comes with a unique and beneficial perspective of living and working with many different cultures and society. That I've experienced what I believe makes a great community and well sought after. My family and I have lived in many different places and of all of them, we chose to call Sheboygan home because we feel this great city is the best place to lay down roots and raise our family. While I may be new to service in local government capacities such as this, I have confidence that it offers a benefit with a fresh outlook for those looking to ensure their voices are being heard. I have great respect for the position of all the person and the duty of speaking for the people ensuring their interests are safeguarded. I'm willing to put in the long hours and hard work to prove that I care and want what's best for this city. I'm committed 
motivated and determined to work alongside the members of this city to ensure resources, funding, and programs are in place to provide value to its citizens. Michael J. Fox is quoted as saying, I like to encourage people to realize that any action is a good action if it's proactive and there's a positive intent behind it. If elected, I look forward to ensuring that the citizens of the city feel their representative upholds the necessity for a safe and caring community, as well as one who has their best interests at heart. Again, thank you for your time and the opportunity to come before you. Thank you. Next is Todd Reinemann. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here in front of the council and to see government at work. Uh, my name is Todd Reinemann. I am a, a uh, resident of Tivoli Lane in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. I have lived and grown up in Sheboygan my whole life. I was a graduate of Sheboygan South High School in 1990. After that, I went to the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh, where I have degrees in criminal justice and political science. Uh, upon that, I came back to the city of Sheboygan to live and raise my family. I came back to Sheboygan because this is a great place to raise a family, and I want to continue to do that, to have a great city to live in, and that's why I came back to the city of Sheboygan. Uh, I, like some others here, I do not have a lot of experience in public office, uh, basically because my job uh, as a law enforcement officer kind of did not help me with the hours that I needed to work to have a job in public office. But now with uh, my work life clearing up, I'm glad I can come here and be in front of you guys today. Uh, in the city of Sheboygan and in the county of Sheboygan, I do hold lots of positions on various church boards, on conservation club uh, boards, and also uh, statewide with a group called My Team Trying. Uh, I come here today because I believe I can be an active part of this uh, group, and I believe I can come in and be an independent thinker for everybody. Uh, in my job, I work with business owners, and I also work with the homeless. I believe that a council member should be a person who can uh, represent everybody, and that's what is what I attend to do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next is Andre Walton. Hey, I want to begin by thanking the council for your work and taking the time out to listen to all the candidates today. It's great to be here. My name is Andre Walton. I am seeking to be the next alderman for Sheboygan's 10th district. I was born and raised in the city of Milwaukee. I graduated from the University of Wisconsin Whitewater in 2016 with a degree in general management. I am currently the executive director of, of a nonprofit organization called Our Wisconsin Revolution. A few years after graduating from college, I searched for a new place to call home, so I moved to Sheboygan in August of 2019. Over the last two years, I've genuinely fallen in love with the small city feel of, the, of Sheboygan. There's something special about living in a community where neighbors seem to always be willing to help each other out. On my very first day in Sheboygan, a neighbor who could see I was struggling for some, with something helped me find my parking spot that I was searching for. So if you live in Country Village, you kind of understand how hard that can be to find. A few months later, another neighbor was there to help me change a tire, just out of the goodness of his heart. I'm not only the beneficiary to these, I'm not the only beneficiary to these small acts of kindness. I witness them all the time. I feel like I've been welcomed into the city of Sheboygan, and I want to use my passion for local government and issues to give back to the community. I've come to realize that I get the greatest feeling of fulfillment and invigoration when I work towards the betterment and success of our neighbors. Since graduating college, I've been a community organizer, a citizen lobbyist, and now an executive director of a nonprofit. My experience has taught me the importance of working with others to get things done. I, I also have, have come to know that working with boards and councils and government structures is not always an easy task. It's hard, often tiring, often tedious work but it's necessary work that brings, it, brings with it the satisfaction of service to others, service to the community, and service to something larger than myself. My role as executive director of a nonprofit organization has quickly taught me about finance and the importance of thorough well-planned budgets. Budgets are not just numbers that you push from one side to another. Budgets are moral documents. Budgets are the end result of people entrusting us with their tax dollars, trusting us to provide as best we can the services they rely on and pay for. I've learned that strategy planning without properly allocating funds in the right direction is a recipe for disaster. I've been following the current Sheboygan budget process because as a resident, it's important to me. 
I understand the need and challenge to evaluate competing budget priorities, from decent wages for our city employees to sensible road and infrastructure maintenance plans. I believe having someone on the council who understands the importance of budget and who can properly relay budget priorities to citizen taxpayers is important to a functional council. I believe I can bring those skills to the council. I also already have roots in the work and working in the community. One of the ways I am involved in, I, involved in the community is serving on the Mead Public Library Board of Trustees. There I get to see firsthand how our decisions can make an, a positive impact. Whether that decision is to approve the building of a new conference room or to approve an annual budget, it all serves to improve the community. I also, have, I also have the amazing joy of serving on Sheboygan's Housing Rehabilitation Committee. On this committee, we can approve low interest rate loans and low to, moder to low to moderate income Sheboygan homeowners to assist them with housing rehabilitation. I believe this is a great program because it offers Sheboygan citizens who are not in the best financial situation an alternative loan option if they, they can't get it from the bank. I understand that there will be a steep learning curve if I get this position and that I won't know everything from the, about the position from the jump. But that has never stopped me from taking on a new challenge and being open and learning to my peer, from my peers. I will make use of my resources that I have at my disposal to increase my knowledge and understanding of this position. I believe the council will also need someone who is dedicated to the role and able to balance their public and private life. That is something that I can bring to the council, someone who is dependable and able to manage my time properly to serve the council and the community to the utmost my abilities. My passion to serve the community has always driven me to work harder for those who count on me. If appointed to the seat, I will bring that same energy and passion to the 10th district. So as you decide who, who is the right fit to serve on this council, I ask that you think about who has the best background to serve the community and who has the experience necessary to fit right in and make an immediate impact. I promise to bring my energy, skills, and experience and my love of this city to represent the 10th district of Sheboygan. With that being said, I appreciate the opportunity to make my case to the council. And I humbly ask for your vote to be the next alderman of the 10th district. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a motion to close nominations? I move to close nominations. Second. second. Motion and second. All those in favor of closing nominations, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Nominations are now closed. All right, so as previously stated, we'll be voting. So please check your email for the, the ballot and rank your, uh, your choices. Um, any questions regarding the voting process from Alders? All right, so we'll just hang tight for a minute while Alders cast their vote. Let's see if we've got them. Let's get the email. Is it in her email? It might not be mine. Yeah, it might take a minute okay. to come. She just sent it. There we go. Got it. Alberta? I don't have no. one. I yours don't have yours email. should be coming. Okay. Hers is coming. Oh, here it is. I am still waiting on mine, Mayor. We, we just sent it to you, Barb. Great, it, thank you. Yep. Got it. Did everyone else receive it? Okay. That means the council should vote aye for the nomination. Oh, that's okay. Thank you. 
Click on this one just to make sure that we're correct about the. Oh, no, it should be there so you can go back. You should be able to. Yep, so you can hit stop boat. All right, we have a result. Um, just want to say thank you to all the candidates that stepped up and put your hat in the ring um, to step up for public service. Um, serving your community is definitely an honor. Um, so that for those that, that didn't get it today, please stay in touch. Um, we're always looking for folks to be on community boards and commissions as well. Um, so happy to follow up with any discussion. Um, with that, I would like to congratulate Andre Walton uh, for having been a, a duly appointed to the position. Congratulations. So we jump right into things here. Um, so if you'd want to come up, we got to give you the oath of office. Having been elected, having been elected to the office of alder person, to the office of alder person, swear that I will support, swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin, and the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin, and will faithfully discharge, and will faithfully discharge the duties of said office, the duties of said office, to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability, and to help each other, to help each other. Congratulations. So we'll have to get you set up too, um, Andre. So um, today you're just going to vote with your foot, your thumb. So. <laughs> All right, 1.5 public forum. Is there anyone on public forum tonight? There is no one this evening. All right, 1.6 mayor's announcements. All right, uh, I'll do this one from the podium. All right, good evening everybody. It's been a busy few days. First of all, I would like to congratulate our newest older person, Andre Walton. I know that you'll do a wonderful job serving the south side of Sheboygan. Um, so a lot of exciting things happening here in the city. I know we have a full agenda today. Um, so I, I know that we'll have a wonderful discussion about our priorities and our vision for the future of this city. So um, I encourage all older, fo older persons to um, I almost created a new term there, older folks. Um, I'll have to trade that mark one. Um, but I know uh, the city staff has done a lot of diligent work in preparing these budget documents um, as we move forward in the future. So once we have our committee, the whole meeting uh, after, after this meeting today, I know that we'll jump in head first and um, have some wonderful discussions. So last weekend, we officially celebrated the kickoff in the designation of the new Marine Sanctuary. This is the first national Marine Sanctuary that is being recognized um, in Lake Michigan. So this is a tremendous opportunity for our community. This essentially means that we have a national park right outside of our doorsteps. So I want to thank city staff, Director Pelichek, 
Former Mayor Mike Vandersteen for all their hard work and dedication. This is a tremendous achievement for us and we should all be proud of the community that we have. This nas national landmark recognizes Wisconsin's maritime history and our important role in the development of our country. Last weekend, Governor Evers presented us, the city, uh, with the official proclamation designating the Marine Sanctuary. So if folks are interested in reading the full thing, please stop by my office um, and take a further look. On October 27th, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at City Hall, uh, we will host uh, another landlord training. This is an amazing resource put on by city staff to learn about city resources and other helpful information to be a smart and reliable landlord. Check out the city's website to register and for more information. Folks have also heard the wonderful news that Hobby Lobby will be one of the new tenants um, occupying the old Shopco location. Um, so as, as we move forward, city staff is working diligently to bring this, uh, this company back. We heard uh, uh, from, from our citizens in turn talking about the importance of bringing this back, so we're excited to announce that as well. Uh, currently, Hobby Lobby is working on final details in the coming months, and hopefully we'll be getting uh, renovations uh, this time some winter. Leaf collection has begun. Please ensure that you're raking leaves to the curb. Do not include other yard waste. I know our DPW staff are working diligently uh, to making sure that we can go up and collect leaves um, and keep our streets clean. Again, Halloween is coming up right around the corner. Halloween, or excuse me, trick-or-treat will be on Halloween on the 31st from 4 to 7 p.m. Thank you, everybody. Alder Flicky Paneski. I move that we receive and file all reports of officers, receive all reports of committees, and adopt all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion on the consent agenda? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Please refer to your board docs. Alder Walton. Alder Walton, how do you vote? Andre. Aye. That's nine eyes. All right, consent agenda is approved. 3.1 through 3.5 will be referred to a variety of committees, resolutions. 4.1 will lay over. Items 4.2 through 4.5 will be referred to a variety of committees. 5.1, um, RC number 125, 21, 22 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred resolution number 70, 21, 22 by older persons Mitchell and Flicky Paneski, uh, approving the adjustment of allowable, allowable city tax levy for 2021 payable, 2022 pursuant to Wisconsin state statutes 66.06023F. Older person Flicky Pan oh, excuse me, older person Mitchell. Thank you, Mary. Make a motion to receive the IC and adopt the resolution. Second. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Please refer to your board docs. Alder Walton. Nine eyes. That's approved. 5.2, RC number 126, 2122, by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred resolution number 71, 21, 22, by older persons Mitchell and Flicky Paneski, expressing the Common Council's intent regarding <coughs> funds received 
by the City of Sheboygan through the Coronavirus Local Fiscal Recovery Funds established under the American Rescue Plan Act and authorizing the expenditure of ERPA funds for administrative expenses. Holder Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Second. It's been a motion. Second. Any discussion on this item? Uh, Director Palachek. Thank you, Mayor. So I just wanted to go through a little bit about this document and the allocation of the American Rescue Plan Act funds. So in March of 2021, uh, the American Rescue Plan Act was passed by Congress to deal with the negative effects of the coronavirus. Sheboygan was allocated $22.8 million under the federal block grant formula based on the percent of low to moderate income persons living in the city. In the first tranche of money from the U.S. Treasury, the city received $11,003,103. Those funds are sitting in a money market account collecting interest and the city has established a new special revenue fund known as the federal grant fund to track these funds independent of our general fund. Um, we have worked closely with the treasury trying to understand eligible activities um, and therefore the activities that are outlined in this uh, document are in compliance with what the treasury has listed as 65 eligible activities. Federal law requires us to spend these funds by December 31st of 2024 um, and we have met city staff has met and developed the following activities per the needs of the community based on the eligible activities the first activity is the south side interceptor sanitary sewer project um, this is to upgrade the sanitary sewer collection system along Lake Michigan shoreline from 7th Street along 7th Street um, this was constructed in the early 1900s and is currently under water um, allocating funds to this project will allow sewer users to see about $67.50 per year or $22.50 per quarter of savings on their sewer bills. Uh, the engineer's estimate for this project is about 10 million. Funding this project at about 9,950,000 would save the sewer utility from borrowing funds over a 20 year time frame. The second project is a raw water, is the raw water intake project at the Sheboygan Water Utility. This is to extend a new water line into Lake Michigan to provide redundant service of water for the city and its wholesale customers. The engineer's estimate for this project is between 36 and 40 million. Um, our ARPA allocation of 9,550,000 would reduce the annual debt service by about 420,000, which translates to an offset of 5% of utilities annual revenues reducing the rates over the term of uh, the debt term of 30 years, the 9.5 million allocation would offset about 12.7 million that would otherwise have to come from utility tax rate payers. The third item is aid to travel, tourism, and hospitality, as it relates to room tax losses in the amount of $563,489, and this is based on 2019 baselines. Um, the 2019 room tax revenues were 1.6 million and the 2020 room tax revenues were about 1 million. Uh, so the difference is that 563,000. Per state statute, the city needs to provide 70% of room tax collections to the tourism entity, which is Visit Sheboygan, and the city would retain 30%. So Visit Sheboygan would get about 394,000 and the city would get about 169,000. The fourth item is housing support, affordable housing at 2,076,511. Um, regulations related to the affordable housing activity are vague, other than the activity needs to be in a qualified census track. And if it's outside of the qualified census track, you have to be able to document how you're dealing with the negative effects of COVID. The city plans to spend these funds in qualified census tracks as development incentives towards affordable housing projects and or to purchase sites for future affordable housing opportunities. The next item is small business economic assistance at 160,000. This would be to continue the city's small business emergency assistance program to help businesses that have revenue issues as it relates to COVID. Previously, the city allocated 424,000 of federal dollars to this effort. In August of 2021, the funds were depleted um, funding of this would be provide grants up to 10,000 for 16 businesses. 
And the last item is 100,000 for administrative expenses. It allows us to charge st staff time for reporting and administering programs. The city anticipates staff time at 33,000 per year to be charged for administrating loan programs, the documentation of projects and completing the required and annual reporting requirements. So if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Questions for Director Palachuk? Administrator Wolf? Thank you, Mayor. I, I just wanted to add to uh, Director Palachuk's uh, statement. This is our proposed uh, plan at this, at this time, but I do want the council to understand that uh, this plan may uh, have some, some ebb and flow to it. Uh, the city staff has continued to apply for different grants, and as the state allows additional funding, these pro um, outlined programs may uh, be a little bit in flux. So we're not in a real hurry to go spend the money. We have projects that are in process that these, these funds will go to, but as the state and, uh, and grant programs come forward, uh, we would rather spend those monies versus the ARPA funds, and that would allow the city to actually put our additional funding to other programs um, as needed. Thank you. Any questions regarding our ARPA funds? <coughs> All right, seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Please refer to your board docs. Alder Walton. There are nine ayes. That's approved. 5.3 RC number 127-21-22 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred resolution number 72-21-22 by Elder Persons Mitchell and Flicky Paneski, authorizing the appropriate city officials to remove certain uncollected delinquent personal property taxes and uncollected accounts receivable by the City of Sheboygan's General Ledger. Older Person Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Second. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion on this item? Mayor. Alder Feldy. I, I see that the, the list of the ones that, ha that are owing us money is very long. Um, are we going to put some of these up for collection or are they just going to be wiped off the books? I, I will have Director Finance Director Krieger answer that question. Thank you. Uh, these will actually be written off. They are past the um, time frame where we can collect them. I will let you know that the Finance Department is putting out an RFP for debt collection services so that moving forward we have a system in place to go for, to find and uh, collect this money. But I worked with the city attorney and there is the statute of limitation on most of these um, bills that have run out. Thank you, I appreciate that. Additional questions from Alders? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Nine eyes. That's approved. 5.4 RC number 128-2122 by the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee to whom was referred resolution number 73-2122 by Elder Persons Feldy and Flicky Paneski amending the ward boundaries of the city of Sheboygan following the official publication of the United States Census data for the state of Wisconsin. Elder Person Flicky Paneski. I move to adopt the resolution with updated attachments. Second. There's been a motion second. Any further discussion? Elder Decker. I just want to recognize uh, uh, Meredith and her crew for the job that they've did with this. This is a lot of uh, a lot of work. This is a ten year every ten year process, but it, it, it's a it's a significant amount of work that, that she had to put into this, and her crew had to put into this. So. Thank you, Elder Decker. Elder Perella. 
Yeah, I just wonder, what is it um, is new in the census that triggered the change in the world distribution? Um, it's state and federal statutes every 10 years that you look at it. So as, this, as people move around, you need to look at where populations are, and that triggers the movement to keep things compact and contiguous and everything else. So we have to look at it every 10 years to make sure. Um, 10 years ago when they drew the ward lines, um, just for an example, after they drew the ward lines, the state um, assembly line came through and created some really small wards. So we had some wards in the city that were 300, 200 people, and wards of our size should be between 800 and 3,200. So we had to figure out to move those ward lines to make sure that our wards were within that um, range. So that's really what we did a lot of, is moving those small wards into the bigger wards. So basically to balance num the numbers of residents in other wards. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Additional questions? I have a question. Walter Walton. So I know that the maps uh, for the local level for nonpartisan elections will be done earlier than the state maps. Will the state maps has, have any effect on local uh, maps? They might. Our, because ours need to be done before November because we have the February and April nonpartisan elections. The state actually has until April because the partisan elections next year are August and November. So what we do and the county does could change depending on when the state makes their determination of their lines. So yes. Additional questions? Seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Nine eyes. That's approved. 5.5 .5 through 5.7 will be referred to the Committee of the Whole. Uh, 7.1, City Attorney. Thank you. 7.1 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications. And that will be referred to the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee. Next is a contemplated closed session. Um, Older person Flicky Paneski. I move to convene in closed session under exemption provided in section 19.851E of the Wisconsin statutes, where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session related to a development opportunity at the former Sheboygan Press building located at 632 Center Avenue and S2A modular development agreement in the South Point Enterprise campus. Second. There's been a motion and second. This is a roll call vote, so please refer to your board doc. Hi, nice. That's approved. So, um, I guess since we have Alder Feldy on the line, um, we'll stay in here. Um, she's on a telephone. She 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 can she can participate, but if there's any documents that she would have to see, she would not be able to vote on. So we can stay in here. Okay, we'll stay in here. Um, so we'll give it a minute um, just for Scott to take us offline. Um, we'll be back. Um, depending on how long closed session goes for committee to hold then. So we'll just take a quick two, three minute recess. And then Emma, we can keep up and have you go in my office. Wow. Okay. Sorry. Sorry.